Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 7 from the May 2013 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so the information reads, Bacalet Gray owns a small factory which makes items from coconut shells. During her first month of operation, she simply wrote down all of her transactions. Her newly hired accountant has found the following details of transactions for the month of Jan 2018. Okay, so just a bit of a disclaimer, I'm going to do the solution slightly out of order because it will make things a bit more efficient and flow a bit more cleanly. So let's take a look at the first thing I'm going to do. All right, so it says that all purchases of raw materials for the month were made on credit from S. Francis. Three large orders were made as follows. So they've given us some information here regarding the credit purchases. We have three, one on the 1st of January, one on the 15th and one on the 29th. Now there's some additional information here, which is also quite important. On the 22nd of January, Bacalet paid S. Francis the total amount owed at that time by check. Okay. On the 31st, Bacalet issued a check for $5,000 to S. Francis on account and was given a discount of 3% of the 5,000. So what they want us to do is to open S. Francis's account and populate it with the information as well as balance it off. So S. Francis, is a trade creditor. We're making credit purchases from S. Francis and as such, S. Francis's account will belong in the purchases ledger. Now there are no opening balances, so we're going to go straight to putting in the three credit purchase amounts, right? So the first amount is on the 1st of Jan, 13,003, followed by another purchase on the 15th of Jan, 9,006, and one final purchase on the 29th of 7,100. Now to the additional information. So on the 22nd of Jan, Bacalet paid S. Francis the total amount owed at that time by check. So on the 22nd of January, we would only have made two purchases for the month. The third purchase was on the 29th and as such would not be included in the amount paid on the 22nd. So if we add up the 13,003 and the 96, we're going to get an amount of 22,900. That's going to go on the debit side. Why does it go on the debit side? Because S. Francis is a creditor, which is a liability. Liabilities, you credit to increase and you debit to decrease. So if you're paying off your liability, you are reducing the total amount you owe, hence decreasing the liability. And as such, that's why you're going to debit the S. Francis account for 22.9 when you repay the amount you owe on the 22nd. Right? And if, if you're not sure about the credit purchases, when you make a credit purchase, you buy goods without paying for them, but you promise to pay in the future. As such, you now owe somebody money. In other words, you have an obligation to transfer resources or benefits or money in the future to this third party. And that is one of the definitions of a liability. And of course, if it's increasing the liability account, we will credit the liability account to record that increase. Okay, uh, there was one other thing we had to do here before we balance off. So on the 31st of Jan, right, Bacolet issued a check for 5000 to S. Francis on account and was given a discount sorry, of 3% of the 5000 Now, this is where some students and myself ran into a bit of a disagreement. The question specifically says Bacolet issued a check for 5000 If Bacolet issued a check for $5,000, the amount of the check is $5,000. But the question goes on to say and was given a discount of 3% of the 5000 so most times we're accustomed to finding 3% of the 5,000, which is what you would do in this case, and then we'd subtract it from the 5,000 to show the net amount paid. Now, that's what the students did. However, that's what I would have usually done as well. But you see this phrase where it said, issued a check for 5,000 to S. Francis? To me, that means the amount on the check was already 5,000. So my opinion of what to put for this transaction here would be to debit S. Francis's account for 5000 to show that you're actually paying 5000 and then put another debit for 150 for the discount received. So it looks like basically the discount was given because you've been making good payments. So now S. Francis has reduced the remaining amount to be repaid um, on this account. So now when you balance off, of course, you'll add the amounts on the debit side, you'll add the amounts on the credit side, and you'll find the difference. That will be, of course, brought down on the credit side. Here. And of course, before that, it has to be carried down from the debit side. So the totals, of course, would match. So again, to get that 1950, you'd add up the figures on the credit side, 
you'd add up the figures on the debit side, and when you find the difference, you would put it on this side, the debit side, because this would have the lower total than rel relative to this side. And of course, now with the inclusion of that balance, when you add up the figures going down, you'll get the same total of 30 on both sides. And of course, don't forget to bring down your balance on the correct side. Okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question. Okay, so continuing, we have all sales were made on a credit basis to V Taylor in three large sales orders as follows. So we have some more information down here. 8th of January, 14.3, 16th of Jan, 10,090, 27th of Jan, 15,008. And again, we have a bit of a paragraph here. So it says V Taylor returned 1,390 worth of goods on the 10th of January. On the 30th of January, the amounts owed to Bacolet for sales on the 8th and 16th, minus the returns were paid off by check. Bacolet granted V. Taylor a discount of 2% on this payment. Okay, so of course they want us to populate the account with the information and to balance it off. Okay, so we made credit sales to V. Taylor. That means V. Taylor is a trade debtor. Trade debtors' accounts are found in the sales ledger. Now, there was no opening balance, but what we will do is we will put in the three sales at once. So we have the sale on the 8th of January for 14.3, followed by the sale on the 16th of January for 10,090, and the final sale on the 27th of January, sorry, for 15,800. Now, let's go to the paragraph below to find out what happened next. We have here V. Taylor returned 1390 worth of goods on 10th of January. Okay, so the return would go on the credit side of the account. Why the credit side? Well, remember, V. Taylor is a debtor. A debtor is classified as an asset. When the debtor returns goods to us, it means that the debtor no longer has to pay for those goods, which means the total amount owed to us is going down. That means that's a decrease to the account. And since the debtor is an asset account, we record any decrease in an asset with a credit to the asset account. Now, the items on the debit side are increases. Why are these increases? Well, when you make a credit sale to a debtor, they didn't pay for that, for those goods, sorry. And of course, they now owe you money. And long story short, anytime anybody owes you money, that's an asset. And with these three sales, the asset, of course, is increasing. All right, so we have now another payment. The amounts owed to Bacolet, uh, for sales on the 8th of Jan and 16th, minus the returns were paid off by check. And Bacolet granted V. Taylor a discount of 2% on this payment. So the amounts owed on the 8th and the 16th. So if we add 14.3 and 10,090, we get 24.390. And if we return, or, or, sorry, 1,390 will, will return to us, that's going to leave us to 23,000. Now, I put the amount paid as 23 even though there was this thing about a discount of 2% on that 23, much for the same reason that I, I applied the discount afterwards for S. Francis, although the phrasing is different. So initially, I actually did minus the 460 from the 23 to get 22,540, but I changed my mind afterwards. If you disagree with that treatment, let me know in the comment section below, and we can get a conversation going to figure out which was the actual correct treatment. My gut feeling is actually telling me that we were supposed to minus the 460 from the 23, but for some reason, I'm not going to follow that this time. Okay, so of course now, to balance off the account, what are we going to do? We are going to add up the items on the debit side, add up the items on the credit side, and then subtract. And that's how we get this balance of 15,340. That's going to make the totals equal, and you bring your balance down here. So we have one more thing to do. Okay, so we have one more account to do, which is the bank account. All right, now the question starts off by telling us that the factory was started with the following asset and liability, bank balance of 31,890, which included a loan of 25,000 from the credit union. So the money, 31,890, partially came from the credit union loan and the balance will probably have come from Bacala Grace Capital. Okay, so we're gonna populate the bank account with that balance of 31,890. Of course, bank is an asset, assets have debit balances at start. Now, we have a final paragraph down here. So it says on 31st of January, Bacolet recorded the following check payments. So we have factory wages, salary to manager, electricity bills, rent, packaging machine, and a credit union loan. A, well, a repayment of a portion of it. Now, don't forget, we also paid off S. Francis a couple of times, and we also received a check from V. Taylor. So what I want to do is I want to just pull back up um, S. Francis's account. Uh, we're going to put the two payments to S. Francis, one for 22.9 on the 22nd of January and one for 5,000 on the 31st. 
And if we pull up VTailer's account, we'll see that we had one payment to VTailer, sorry, one receipt from VTailer on the 30th of January of 23,000. Okay, now the rest of the items inside of the bank account just came from the list of payments, right? So we had the 8,000 to the factory manager, sorry, 8,000 in factory wages, 3,500 in salary to factory manager, 1,040 in electricity bills, 2,600 in rent, 13,620 for a packaging machine and 1,000 on the credit union loan. Now, of course, the balance of this account, we're going to have to add up all the items on the credit side, add up all the items on the debit side and find a difference. Interestingly enough, we actually had more payments than we had receipts. So we had more money going out than we had coming in. The total on this side was 57,660, which I'll put in here. And the total here was just about 54, it wasn't even 55,000. So we, of course, we'll take the 57,660 and minus the total here. And that would give us a balance carry down of 2,770. So of course, when we add down now, we'll have the 57,660 total matching and the balance will be brought down on the credit side, which implies that this is an overdraft. Remember, credit balances imply liabilities. So if you have a credit balance in your bank account, your bank account is an overdraft. Okay, and part A to this question, which is what I'm, I'm doing last, from the above transactions, identify one item of revenue expenditure and one item of capital expenditure for Bacal and Green. So let's pull back up the bank account. Now, capital expenditure is any expenditure to acquire or make significant improvements to non-current assets. We only had one of those, which was the packaging machine. Everything else was an item of revenue expenditure. Revenue expenditure is any expenditure that is not capital expenditure. So paying salaries, so basically, Practically any expense you'd see in your income statement, right? In the expense section, all these things, say electricity, rent, uh, factory wages, paying off creditors, all those things are items of revenue expenditure. And again, capital expenditure is any expenditure to acquire or make significant improvements to the value of non-current assets. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question seven from the May 2013 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website to find some PUA handouts you might find useful. Anyhow, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.